Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head to Germany once again. We're going to return to one of my favourite breweries and the oldest brewery in the world, actually. So we're going to go and have a taste of beer from the Bayerische Staatsbrauerei Weinstefan, a very famous name in the brewing world, of course. And we're going to have a taste of one of their new beers. This one is the Kristall Weizenbock and it comes in at 7.5% ABV. So I'm really interested to try this one. The definitive Weizenbock, of course, really in Germany is the Schneiderweiss Aventinus. I don't think I've ever heard of a filtered or a Kristall Weizenbock before. So definitely looking forward to this one. The last beer I reviewed from Wein Stefan was the one that they did for the anniversary, the 500th anniversary of the Reinheitsgebot, the Femsen Hunded Sexen Keller beer. And that was really nice. And it is cool to see that even an old brewery like this is really kind of continuing to experiment with their beers. They've used quite a few different hops and things in this one by all accounts so definitely looking forward to this one and I hope you guys enjoy my take on it. So anyway as is usual with my beer reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery. If you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews I've done from Vine Stefan before. No doubt I will add some more in the near future when they do some more beers. There's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews do consider subscribing into the channel. The whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city or state, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the German beer reviews that I've done for you and that's constantly being added to of course and please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys and the support you give the channel is hugely appreciated. And do in particular let me know about German beer because I know there's lots of really good breweries in Germany that I simply haven't heard of. I love German traditional style beer and I miss it a lot since I lived in Heidelberg. And if you are particularly interested in German beer, of course, do make sure you check out my friend Peter over at The Clueless Drinker. He reviews a lot of the kind of new wave craft German beers, but also a lot of the traditional ones as well. A very nice guy. Make sure you check out his channel. And also my friend Wolfgang over at Katzenfeld. He reviews his beers in Germany. does Austrian, Slovenian and some German beers as well. A very nice chap as well. So make sure you check out those guys. But anyway, to tell you a little bit about the Weinstefan Brewery then. So this brewery's origins trace back to the year 725 when St. Corbinian and 12 of his companions founded a Benedictine monastery on the Narberg Hill and thus the art of brewing was born at Weinstefan. So the first historical reference to Weinstefan was in the year 768 at which time there was a hop garden in the vicinity of the monastery and the owner of this hop garden had to pay a tithe or a tax of 10% to the monastery in order to have this garden. So in 955 the Weinstefan Stefan Monastery was plundered and destroyed by the Huns and this laid the foundation for a tradition of the Benedictine monks having to repeatedly rebuild and reconstruct their monastery. So in 1040 beer brewing officially began in Weinstefan after Abba Arnold obtained a license to brew beer from the city of Freising thus marking the official birth of the Weinstefan Monastery Brewery. Freising incidentally is very very close to Munich Airport so if you do find yourself there with a long layover you can go and try some very very nice beer at Actually. But between 1085 and 1463, the Weinstefan Monastery didn't have much luck at all. It burnt down completely a total of four times. It was destroyed or depopulated by three plagues, various famines, and also a great earthquake as well. So there was a lot of things going on during this time. But following in the tradition of the Huns in 955, Emperor Ludwig the Bavarian destroyed the monastery in the year 1336. And this was repeated by the French and the Swedes during the Thirty Years' War, which I believe was 1618 to 64. 48. I may be wrong on the dates there, but then it was also destroyed by the Austrians during the Spanish succession. But the monks didn't give up and they continued to rebuild the brewery time and again and they did manage to refine their, uh, their kind of brewing work as well during that, which is quite impressive actually when you consider all that was going on. So in 1516, Duke, Duke Wilhelm IV of Bavaria issued the Bavarian Purity Law, the Reinheitsgebot, and this stated that only barley, hops, water and yeast could be used in Bavarian beer. But the brewery say this law, of course, had a great influence influence on their beer and of course as we know German traditional beer has been hugely influenced by that law. But the Weinstefan Monastery was dissolved in 1803 during the course of secularisation in Germany and the possessions and rights of the brewery were then transferred to the Bavarian state but the drinkers of Weinstefan continued to drink it under the secular supervision of the royal holdings at Schleisheim. In 1852 the 
Central Agricultural School moved from Schleisheim to Weinstedt and taking with it the Bavarian brewing students. And in 1895, the school became an academy and was elevated in 1919 to the University of Agriculture and Brewing, which was later incorporated into the Technical University of Munich in the year 1930. So Weinstefan thus kind of developed into a centre of brewing technology. And this was a fact that did that really kind of boosted the reputation of the, the Bayerische Staatsbrauerei Weinstefan. Bayerische Staatsbrauerei Weinstefan, of course, translates into English as the Bavarian State Brewery. But in 1921, the brewery was officially given this name. And since 1923, it's used the Bavarian State Crest, which is, as you can see, is right here as the brewery symbol. So they're a very famous brewery. They're the longest operating, continue, longest continually operating brewery in the world, of course. There is... Um, Weltenberg as well, who were founded in 1050, and they've remained attached to the monastery, of course, as well. So there's two, there's a lot of very old breweries in Germany. Weinstefan, of course, are widely recognised as the oldest brewery in the world. Weltenberg are the oldest monastery brewery in the world. But yeah, these guys produce some really awesome beer. Just to list the other ones you can get from these guys, there's the Crystal Weiss beer, which is the green labelled one. There's the Hefeweiss beer, which is the blue one. That's the unfiltered one, the Natterdruf. There's the Hefeweiss beer Dunkel, which obviously is a dark wheat beer. They've got the Leiche, which is the light one, the Corbinian, which is probably my favourite beer from these guys. That's their Doppelbock. They have the Original, which is the Munich style Hellas. They have a Pils, an Oktoberfest beer, a Winterfest beer, and they also do a Radler beer. And they, have an, and they also have the original and the Hefeweizen beer in non-alcoholic varieties as well. And they are experimenting a little bit with different beers too. Like I said, they released one for the 500th anniversary of the Rheinheitsgebot, the Wemsen 100 Sexen Keller beer. And that was really nice. That's one that I definitely recommend that you check out if you get the chance. So yeah, that's enough about the brewery just now. Let's actually get on to the tasting of this beer itself. I'm really looking forward to this one. So yeah, as I mentioned to you, this one is a 7.5% Crystal uh, Weizen box, so it's a filtered Weizen box beer, which should be quite interesting. This is the first one of this type that I've actually come across, and this beer is interesting. It said on the website that they'd experimented with quite a few different hops in this one. So this one is hopped with Crystal Opal Smaragd, which is also known as Emerald, as far as I know, Sapphire, which of course is known as Sapphire hops, and it also has some pearls. So it's all German hops that are in this one. So it should be. A really quite nice beer this one. I'm definitely looking forward to that. So yeah, there you can see there's the Vine Stefan artwork on this one. As I mentioned, the Bavarian State Crest is on the top of this one, which is nice. You can see there is the top label, which you get of course with a lot of German beers, and there is the kind of typical um Vine Stefan bottle cap on this one. So yeah, really nice looking, really nicely presented beer, and you can even see in the bottle. It is crystal clear. So without further ado then, let's get this guy open and we'll get on with the tasting then. Yeah, it should be nice. Yeah, nice smoky opening on this one. And you can smell that nice sort of banana -y, bubble gum sort of thing coming out of this as you open it up. Yeah. Quite a bit of head just coming out of this one. We'll just let it chill out for the moment. But as you can see, that beer is absolutely crystal clear. Yeah, so I think it's fair to say this one is a sort of pale golden straw colour. But yeah, absolutely crystal clear. You can see, if I put my fingers behind the glass, you can see right through that. There's a big head come out of this one. So yeah, that's a solid two or three finger head. I maybe should have been a bit more careful with the pour on this right enough. But there's one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass. And a few little ones just going up towards the bottom of the head there. Let's just put the last wee bit in and we can let it settle down. No sediment, of course, in this one which is quite interesting. But um, yeah, really nice looking beer. So let's have a closer look at the aroma and see how we get on. Yeah, now this one, I would say with this, <clears throat> normally I'd expect a Weizenbock to have a little bit more kind of caramel and things in this. You can detect a little bit of caramel and almost biscuity malt with this beer. But really it just, to me, it just smells like a regular kind of Natterdrug Weizen. There's not too much in the way that would make you think it's a Weizen bot. The really distinctive things for me with a Weizen bot would be, like as I say, caramel, a little bit toasted and some sort of biscuity kind of grainy thing going on. And you can smell a little bit of that. You can smell a little bit of a toasted caramel on the back end of the nose. But other than that, no, it really, to me, it just comes across straight up as a Weizen. So there's a lot of that kind of banana bubblegum aroma that you'd expect. 
there's some nice smooth wheaty character a little bit of clovey sort of spice kind of thing going on yeah it really leans towards that as my nose adjusts to it a little bit I can pick up some yeah, I can pick up a little bit of caramel and it's, it is a wee bit toasty, but really it's the, it's the typical Weizen elements that are dominating the nose on this one. But yeah, a nice smelling beer. There's just, as I always say, take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck into it. But yeah, it's really, it just, it smells really nice. If you enjoy a wheat beer, just take a little bit of time to enjoy the aroma of this. And when it's fine, Stefan, we know it's going to be pretty good. I think this beer got a, an 81 on rate beer when I checked it out, but it was a 98 overall within the, the Hefeweizen style, which is, uh, which is obviously quite good. But yeah, there's some noble hop elements with this one. You've got a little bit of earthiness, some floral kind of grassy sort of thing. The pearl hop, of course, gives you a little bit of that kind of spicy floral aromaticity, but all the German noble hops, they tend to be quite floral, lighter grassy, and just a little bit of earthiness as well. But yeah, it smells really nice. Just take a bit of time and enjoy it for yourself. But let's get stuck into this beer then. So this one is the Crystal Weizenbock from the Bayerische Staatsbrauerei Weinstefan in Freising, Bayern, Germany. Prost! Yeah. You wouldn't expect anything less from Weinstefan. That's a good beer. You know, um, I always enjoy that. When I went to Germany, before I went to Germany, I absolutely loved wheat beers. And when I went to Germany, I drank so much of them, or so many of them, or so much of, of it, that um, I just, I, I just, I went off them a little bit. And now I don't drink them all that often. And I do it mainly because I, I enjoy the style and I don't want to spoil it for myself. So it's always really cool when you come back and try one of these, these proper German brewed Hefeweizens. And they turn out like this. This is a really nice beer, but like I say, you wouldn't expect anything less from these guys. They're not going to put out a bad beer. It's really nice, and it's just so light and drinkable as well. It's absolutely lovely, and in the flavour, it definitely comes out as more of a Weizenbock. It's got a little bit more of that kind of... Uh, kind of caramelly sort of thing going on with it, definitely in the flavour, you don't notice it as much in the aroma, but on the taste, absolutely, definitely a Weizenbock. So yeah, I mean, it has everything you'd expect, um, you've got this nice bready character that just goes right across the middle of your palate, on top of that, you start to get these kind of thicker, wheaty elements, of course, which is, um, it's just really nice, it's quite smooth and almost slightly kind of sweet, there's a good bit of a, that, that banana and sort of bubblegummy character coming out of this one, it's quite a strong uh, flavour that's coming out of this, which is really nice. I think the slightly higher alcohol content that this beer has suits it, and that's kind of covered right in the middle of the palate, there's that nice, kind of slightly richer, caramelly and more biscuity thing, and that really suits this beer actually, I do like the, the slightly stronger alcohol content that this beer has, it would be interesting to see them do that with some of their other beers as well, just put up the alcohol content a bit, because I like that that kind of richness, that caramel and biscuity richness that you'll get in this one, right in the middle of the palate, it suits the beer very, very nicely actually. I can see why they did this as a 330 milliliter bottle, rather than a half litre. But a really, yeah, a really nice beer, this one. If you get the chance to try this, I recommend that you do. And any of the Vine Stefan beers, of course, are really nice. In terms of the hoppy side of this beer, there's, it's quite interesting, this has got a little bit more complexity to it, so in the back corners of the palate, as you'd expect, there's a little bit of that earthiness there, and it smooths out as you come further forward. There's a lot of different things going on on the front corners of your palate, though. There's a nice sort of um, floral character to it. It's a little bit spicy, too. You can feel there's maybe even a little bit of herbal character in there. I mean, when they've used four or five different German hop varieties, you will expect just a little bit of, uh, of complexity to this one. And around the front curve of the palate, of course, it's just a little bit lighter and, and grassier, of course. But it's a nice beer, like, try this one if you get the chance. If you just go behind the front curve of your palate, you'll feel that little oily bubble where these nice kind of fruity esters come out of the beer. 
and it's got a good bit of a slightly sharper citric character to it as well and again that sort of slightly sharper fruity citric thing that's going on it suits the kind of stronger alcohol content that you get out of this beer too like you say that that citricy character and the kind of richer caramel and biscuity sort of thing going on in this beer work together really quite nicely so um, overall you know it's a very solid beer but you wouldn't expect anything less from uh, from Vine Stefan and like I say it's always cool to go back and try some of these proper German wheat beers. I need to make sure I review more wheat beers over uh, the next little while. I think most of the ones I've done recently have been the American wheats but I love reviewing German traditional beer and it is cool to see that these traditional breweries are producing new things and still doing it very well of course. Um, but yeah, really really good beer this one and try it if you get the chance. Uh, in terms of the mouthfeel, I'd say this guy is mid-bodied. Yeah, I think it's fair to say this one is mid-bodied. It is a bit lighter than you would expect from a Hefeweizen normally. And I do find, I tend to find that the difference between the Kristall and the Naturklub uh, Hefeweizens, there is a little bit of a difference in the body. And I always find with wheat beers, I tend to only be able to drink one of them. I find them very, very filling. But this one is, uh, is easier drinking. You could have one or two of these quite easily, actually, if you did want to session it, although it's 7.5%. Um, it is a little bit boozy, so just, just kind of bear that in mind. But yeah, mid-bodied beer. Um, the carbonation is quite smooth. It's quite an oily mouthfeel, this one. The malt base uh, has a good bit of sweetness to it from the caramel side of things, but overall, it's quite smooth and it's got quite a bit of body to it because of the breadiness and the, the sort of yeasty characters and things that are going on in this one, but it's, it's really nice. Uh, the hoppy side of things, it has a little bit of bitterness. It's not too high on the IBUs, right enough. Uh, and it, is, it, it just has a little bit of dryness around the edge of your palate and there's a little bit of a kind of nice, um, juicy, sweet, fruity character to this beer as well. So for me, it ticks all the boxes. It's a really nice beer and like I say, the cool thing about this one is to see one of the old traditional breweries still experimenting with different styles, especially when it's a style they are well known for, of course, as well. The Hefeweizen is probably one of the, the signature styles of the Vine Stefan Brewery. So like I say, if you get the chance to try this beer, I highly recommend that you do. It's, it's very nicely done, but we wouldn't expect anything less from this brewery. So um, yeah, so yeah, once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Like I said, if you're particularly interested in German beer, make sure you check out Wolfgang at Cats and Vet or Peter over at The Clueless Drinker. They review these things a little bit more regularly than I do, as much as I love to do them. But let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comments section below. Let me know what your favourite beers from Vine Stefan are and all of these things. Do give me some other German beer recommendations as well. But thank you for watching. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. And I will catch you guys very soon with more beer reviews. This was the Vian Stefaner Crystal Weizen bought from Bayerische Staatsbrauerei Vian Stefan in Freising, Bavaria, Germany. A really damn good brewery, one of the, the, the oldest in the world as far as I know, and they're still experimenting and producing a really good beer, which is what you always want. Until the next time, slander just now, and I will catch you guys very soon. Prost!